Shalom, brothers and sisters, and as always, all honor, praise, and esteem goes to our Heavenly Father Yahweh in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. Thank y'all for tuning in once again, brothers and sisters. And this here is just going to be a, a reminder message, brothers and sisters, to remind you uh, who our Savior is. Our Savior is Yahuwah, brothers and sisters. And it always has been. And when we read right here in Isaiah 43 and 11, it says, I, even I am Yahuwah. And beside me, there is no Savior. Now, you got to remember that the Most High is one. That there is no one else besides him who lived for who's been living forever everyone else has been created by him and like the messiah he was begotten of him brothers and sisters directly of him and everybody was created by the heavenly father there there is no second high power no second creator sitting on his his or her throne somewhere else creating creations and everything i just wanted to, to bring that up and remind y'all that yes the most high is the one true savior and i mentioned this in a past video brother and sister, but i want to bring it up again today The Most High is always used either a messenger or a man or woman to save us. I will repeat that. The Most High is always used either a messenger or a man or a woman or a woman to save us, to be our Savior through a messenger or a man or a woman. With this understanding, brothers and sisters, and what these false prophets and false teachers are doing by trying to cut out Yahusha because of this verse here is against the Most High and therefore against his redemption of his people the way he said he's going to do it and so they're not going to be covered by the most high who sacrificed his only begotten son from above we are the begotten from below brothers and sisters he is the only one born from above and that's why we got to be reborn through him from above to be of Jerusalem from above or Jerusalem from above in order for you to be from Jerusalem above you have to be reborn through the Messiah because he is from above reborn in spirit brothers and sisters but if you just focus on the firstborn down here being born of flesh and blood and DNA You focus on the wrong thing because no flesh and blood shall inherit the kingdom. But down here, yes, we are considered as firstborn here. And the Messiah came through the tribe of Judah to do a job, to be the hand of the Most High on the earth to save his people. Just as Samson was a hand on this earth to save the Most High's people. Just as Moses was the hand of the Most High on this earth to save his people. Just as King David, well before he was King David, he saved his people through David. By fighting the Philistines and their champion, Goliath. Just as Judith chopped off that general head, the Most High used Judith to chop off that general's head. 
to save his people, just as the Most High used Queen Esther and Mordecai together to save the Most High's people from total annihilation. The Most High used the messenger to kill 185,000 soldiers ready to destroy Jerusalem. The Most High is our Savior. None is beside Him. You have to get a full understanding of what this means by reading the full book and get an understanding of the book and how the Most High works through His creation and His begotten, His only begotten one from Himself to save Zion. To save his people. Y'all hear what I'm saying? There is a lot of trickery and deception all over the place. And I see my brother still falling for it. Even though I did that full series about the Messiah in the Old Testament. There's still a lot of them falling for this. There, the Romans wrote the New Testament. J.C., uh, if you understand that J.C. is not our Messiah, but if you put the right one there, like Yahusha, in place of that J.C. where he's supposed to be, then you would know that, okay, this is now Messiah. That J.C. character and all that come with it can go in the garbage. But, the scriptures are still intact to where you can put his name back in the right place. The same with all the other scriptures. You put Yahweh's name back in the right place. And take out all these pagan names and idols out of um, the scriptures. And it, it'll be fine. And just as the Most High has led me into this truth. He's leading everybody else into this truth. But still, you don't throw the scriptures in the trash just because his name is not in it or his son's name not in it. You know, there's a lot of people falling for this, that the Bible is trash or, or come from Egypt. Because they don't belong to him. They don't. They're going to fall for every winter doctrine and follow all these false prophets right into the lake of fire. They're destined to do it because they don't believe him first over everyone else. And they're not getting the understanding. They're not studying themselves to be approved. Yes, the Most High is our true Savior. And through many, he have worked good works to save us. Even through Noah, he saved Noah. With his mercy. And all of us after Noah and his three sons. Through his mercy, he saved us, y'all. He could have wiped us all out and through the project, you know, in the gutter somewhere, never made another man or woman again. But he saved his creation through his mercy, through Noah. What about Judas Maccabee? And multiple others who stood up, even that, um, what you call it, son of the whore, uh, I think it's First Kings, I can't think of the guy's name, start with a J though, I think it's chapter 12. Hmm. 
no. Uh, I have to really think about that one. But anyway, it was it chapter seven? Sorry, everyone. It was actually Judges chapter 12 where it talks about Jephthah. And uh, he was the son of the whore. Let me go back one more. Chapter 11. Here it is. Son of an harlot. The Most High used this man to save actually Ephraim because Ammon, the children of Ammon, was beefing with, with the northern kingdom, with the northern um, section of the kingdom when it was just judges at the time over um, Yasharal. But anyway, y'all can read this yourself. The point is, the Most High never contradict himself. He'll never lead you astray. He'll never lead you into lies and deception. He won't lead you to half-truths. He won't lead you to chew on the meat, spit out the bone doctrine. He'll tell you the truth. And the whole truth that, that all of it may set you free. That you may know and understand or it'll set you free from lies and deception in its fullness. Because that's who the Most High is. He's not a mighty one, a creator that will give you 90% and then tell you to spit out that other 10%. That's not him. Not the one I read throughout this whole book. He's straight up, straightforward. And it's out there for those who truly seek in him. He will reveal it to you. He will lift the veil of that, that veil that's over your eyes that you may see. He would take those stoppers out of your ears that you may hear. And he give you a clean mouth to speak with. Without perverseness. Without nastiness flowing from your mouth. Without curse words. Because none of those things is going to exist in the kingdom. You're not going to walk in front of the Messiah and, and be cursing and talking perverseness and Saying all manner of wickedness out of your out of your mouth. He's gonna give you a clean mouth, a righteous mouth, a Kodesh mouth. And he's gonna put truth in you. And you will speak nothing but truth and righteousness and good things. When the time comes. But for now, you need to be working on putting all those things away, brothers and sisters. The perverseness, the cursing, conversations, and even being around people that talk like that and say things like that. That's why he says he come to bring a sword to separate us from the tares. To cut off things that could trip you up and get you caught up in a lake of fire with the same person that you want to hang around. He come to separate you from them and cut them off out of your lives. And these people that sitting there saying that the Most High never had a begotten son from above that came down to save, to save Zion. These are the false ones that's going to get most or some of the believers he thrown in a lick of fire. He 
What about the group that believed Haile Selassie was the Messiah? He fulfilled Haile Selassie didn't fulfill none of the prophecies that were written for the Messiah to fulfill. He was an actual king on the earth. But not at the same time that the Most High said, or not in the same way that the Most High said that his king would be ruler over the earth for a thousand years. That man didn't wasn't alive. He didn't come back in the sky, for, you know, from the sky and step foot on Mount Zion and gathered all the saints and cleansed and purged them and set them up in their own kingdom and reign and rule for a thousand years that man gone now he, what, what, what's going on brothers and sisters even uh, Bob Marley believed that and he died in in, in false witness y'all I can't say whether he's where he's going but He did not, he died believing that. There are some over there in Israel who were taken or let's just say who went to Israel through Ben Amin. Who didn't believe in the Messiah? Or didn't believe that he came already. Either way. They are in false witness. But who knows. The most I have mercy on them. I don't know. I don't know. We just have to wait and see. When that time comes. But thank y'all for tuning in. If you thinking. Something different about this. And you're not tying in all the other scriptures where the Most High worked through all, you know, his messengers and he worked through a man or a woman, a specific man or a specific woman on this particular earth to save us. Then you got some more studying to do. And the best studying to do is you and the Most High through Yahusha sitting at that table. Or on your back porch, front porch, whatever. You and him alone sitting there reading that scripture. Why his Kodesh spirit is leading God you and helping you and bringing things into remembrance. And giving you understanding. The comforter of the most high. Giving you understanding of what you're reading and connecting the dots and helping you. Helping you turn the pages of the book here and there to get a full understanding of what this means. And sometimes it may take a year or a couple of years to get a full understanding of this. While you read through the book and take notes and, and, and breaking things down and asking the most high questions about his Kodesh word and and letting them lead you over here and there. And then finally the pieces fit together. And you're like okay I see this full of puzzle now. Let me put this final piece in a puzzle. And there it is the picture. Most I ain't no respect of persons. The same as he opened this up to me. You will open it up to you. Ain't no special man sitting over here with. The only one you got, you have to go to for answers. This is not no special organization or no special channel. The only home of the truth. I don't think so, brothers and sisters. The Most High is the only home of the truth. Through His begotten Son. That's the only home of the truth. Hallelujah. With that, I'm going to say Shalom. Brothers and sisters, y'all keep praying for me as I complete 
what I need to complete by the Most High's hand. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, y'all know what to do.